everyone. I'm Kara Minowie. This is Shell Point Today for Monday, April 28th. On today's show, golf pro Gary Keating teaches us how to do the pitch and run chipping shot. Ann Wharton reviews tonight's movie presentation, How Green Was My Valley. And Phil Hilton discusses calligraphy and how you can create beautiful scripts like these. But first, this is a noteworthy week for several reasons. First of all, Shell Point TV is going on hiatus starting next week. We will be installing equipment in the studio that will allow us to broadcast in high definition, just like the other channels on your dial. Channels 11, 12, and 13 will be off the air from May 5th until May 19th, when it will be back and better than ever. Now, for those two weeks, where will you get your information? Well, we highly recommend ShellPoint.net, the award-winning website that has all the information you need and more. You can find your menu options for the entire month, academy schedules, memorial notices, and much more. Try it out. We promise you'll like it. It's www.shellpoint.net. This is also the last week that the Village Church will be available. Renovation begins Thursday, May 1st, and their Sunday services will be held in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands for the rest of the summer. Extra bus services are already lined up to transport people to and from the island and Eagles Preserve. Because of the smaller room size, there will be two Sunday morning services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., which are both identical, so you can choose which time of day to attend. Sunday night and Wednesday night services will now be held in the social center on the island. We'll tell you more about the Village Church's plans all this week. But for now, let's fill you in on today's happenings. Tonight is our classic movie night presentation with the 1941 film, How Green Was My Valley? It's playing tonight at 6.45 p.m. in the Social Center on the island. Ann Wharton has this review. Hello again, I'm Ann Wharton, and welcome to Real Review. For Monday's movie, we'll be showing the 1941 Academy Award winner, How Green Was My Valley. This nostalgic story is based on Richard Llewellyn's best-selling novel of the same name. The film starts out with Hugh Morgan remembering his Welch childhood and being the youngest member of the Morgan family. The men of his family are all coal miners. He remembers his father as being strong and gentle man, and his mother as a sweet and tireless woman who loved her large family with all of her heart, and his five fearless brothers, and his one beautiful sister who married not wisely, but well, and his pastor, Mr. Griffod, who inspired him with spiritual zeal and the thirst for knowledge. How Green Was My Valley tells the story of good people and how the black hole wrung so perilously from the fair earth darkens the lives of those who dig it and befouls the lush valley in which they live. There is a wonderful scene after the family has had dinner and when the dishes have been washed, the box is brought to the table for spending money to be handed out. No one in the valley has ever seen a bank. They kept their savings on the mantelpiece. The father of the Morgan family always said that money was made to be spent, just as men spent their strength and brains earning it, and as willingly, but always with a purpose. Not all Hollywood movies are perfectly cast, but this one is. A very young Roddy McDowell is superb as Hugh with his deeply sensitive face and shy but stalwart manner. Walter Pidgeon plays Mr. Gofford as a true, simple, and forthright man of God. Excellent, too, are Sarah Allgood as the mother and Maureen O'Hara as the beautiful sister who marries the wrong man. How Green Was My Valley was nominated for a total of 10 Academy Awards and walked away with five Oscars for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Supporting Actor, Donald Crisp, Best Cinematography, and Best Art Direction. The most controversial aspect of the film was that it defeated two of the greatest pictures ever made, Citizen Kane and Maltese Falcon. I believe that all of you will be thrilled with the beautiful Welch choral singing, which is generously spaced throughout the film. 
How Green Was My Valley will be shown one time only on Monday, April 28th at 6.45 p.m. in the Social Center on the island. Be sure to get your soda and popcorn and enjoy this motion picture of great poetic charm and dignity. See you all at the movies. Movies are great, of course, but there's nothing like the excitement of live entertainment. That's why you'll definitely want to attend tomorrow night's Shell Point Variety Show with the theme Route 66. Your friends and neighbors will be showcasing their skills in the church auditorium starting at 715, and we just may have some classic car surprises on hand as well. Leslie Brand has this preview. Yeah, there's nothing like getting your car out onto the open road and heading out west, getting your kicks on Route 66. Look, there's an old Texaco station. And there's a great driving restaurant over there. I've got some classic tunes on the radio. Yeah, this is gonna be the best road trip ever. Okay guys, this is totally fake. We're not really fooling anybody. But you know what? You don't actually have to go out west to enjoy Route 66. Just think of the classic songs, the skits, the poems about road trips, mom and pop burger stands, and your favorite class of cars. That's exactly what we're looking for at the Route 66 Variety Show, coming on April 29th. The Route 66 Variety Show, and we'll see you out on the road. Woohoo! So we've shown you how to fake enjoying the great outdoors. How about enjoying the real great outdoors at the Shell Point Golf Club? The rates have just come down now that season is over and the course looks better than ever. Today, Gary Keating shares a tip on how to do the pitch and run. My name is Gary Keating. Welcome to Shell Point Golf. We're going to hit some pitch and runs today. The club I've selected today is a 52 degree sandwich. We want the, go the golf ball to actually hit the green and roll out. We're not looking to get the ball in the air and fly it to the hole. What I'm always looking for when I'm playing golf, especially when I'm hitting a shot, is to get the ball on the green as quickly as possible and almost have the ball roll like a putt when it's finished. What we actually want is the ball to be slowing down at the hole. So distance control is very important. How I control my distance on this particular shot is dictated by my backswing. For an example, if I take my backswing this much, I can generate a certain amount of energy. If we go back this longer, we can generate more energy. Further back, even more so energy. So what we're actually looking to do is to contain the energy that we supply to the head of the club. Having said that, we want to make sure that two things happen when we hit this particular shot is number one is we don't decelerate onto the golf swing. If we decelerate, generally what happens is the club will hit the ground too fast and we'll basically come up short at the distance required. So I'm going to show you a deceleration and then we'll show you basically the correct one. So I'm going to walk you through the steps. We've got a golf ball, 52 degree wedge. I'm going to set the wedge behind the golf ball, aiming the wedge face would I want the golf ball to land. My stance is always a little bit left of the intended target. So once again, the butt of the club's always in the center of the belly. So I'm gonna make a practice swing first. And during the practice swings, I'm trying to feel the distance that I need to hit it or the amount of energy I need to supply to produce the distance I need when we hit the golf shot. So I'm gonna come back, we got a flag. So nice and slow. And as you can see, my back swing's very slow. And my follow through is always a little faster than the back swing. So we're going to do a little deceleration. Hopefully you can see it on camera. So we're going to go back and we come in, club hits the ground a little fast, blade gently leaves open and we gently hit the ball to the right or we'll hit it thin and it will run past the flag and off the green. So we're going to do a correct one right now and you'll see my back swing will be a lot slower than the follow through. So during my practice swings, I try to obtain this feeling. So I might take two or three practice swings and you'll see the pros on TV do the same thing. So nice and slow. And the follow through is a little faster. Nice and slow. Follow through is a little faster. So let's put this into practice. Nice and slow. Follow through is a little faster. And as you can see, we've got a successful golf shot. I hope this tip helps you and you can contact me 
at shellpointgolf.com or the phone number 433-9790. This week is also significant because the Academy of Lifelong Learning begins its summer semester in May. All this week, we'll be previewing different classes that you can sign up for, both new and old. For example, one returning class has a new name. Anatomy of Words is now called Appreciating Words. It's a weekly exploration of our growing and changing language and its unique influences in our lives. There's no sign up required and all are welcome to the weekly Appreciating Words sessions happening every Monday at 10.30 a.m. in the Woodlands Oak Room. One other way of appreciating words, through the art of calligraphy. Phil Hilton will be teaching the art of calligraphy every Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. in the Sable Room starting May 6th. Let's learn more. Hello everyone, I'm here today with Phil Hilton of Lakewood and we're talking about a course coming up the first week of the Academy on May 6th. Thanks for joining me, Phil. Glad to be here. You ha probably have the nicest looking um, course description in the Academy brochure. Learn calligraphy. Calligraphy is kind of mysterious to those of us who really don't know how to do it and wish we could. Is it hard to learn how to do? Well, it's not an art form like you have to have natural talent like music or painting. This is something you really learn by doing and repetitive takes a lot of practice. So anybody who wants to and is willing to put in the time can pretty much Absolutely. Learn. There is no talent needed. It's just you need to be ready to work at it. That's all. And if you do work at it, you can do some amazing things. Right? Absolutely. I think the thing that we see the most of um, is a note card to somebody, an invitation. That's what makes up the wedding invitation so special. That's especially true of the uh, particular hand, as we call it, that we'll be learning here, copper plate. Oh, okay. That's this uh, scripty looking kind, as you say, it's on invitations. Uh huh. And that's what you're going to focus on? Yes. Now you're going to have some special tools that people are going to use. Yes, especially in this uh, particular style only, uh, the right-handed people would use an offset nib holder like this. Uh -huh. If you're left-handed, you'd use the traditional straight one like this. And this is a nib? Yep. They're, uh, they're pointed steel nib, and when you press down on it, it makes the width of the letter uh, that you see here on the downstroke, and then you get thinner. That's the beauty of it, the thick and thin of the letters. Interesting. Interesting. Now, if someone is, is coming to this class, what would they expect? I see that we have five Tuesdays for an hour and a half. What, what, would, what will your students be doing? In the classroom, I will be demonstrating and they will be working on a particular element of the alphabet, uh, starting out with basic strokes before we even form letters. Because mm -hmm. there are three or four or five basic strokes that comprise almost every letter. And if you get those down, then it's easy to form the letters. And we'll be learning that at first. And as we go on, we'll proceed to all of the letters and capital letters and punctuation so we can write just anything we wish in copper plate. And that will go, that will be the five Tuesdays at the end of the five weeks. How much time will people put in outside of class? They'll probably want to put in a lot, but how much? It's up to them, but uh, I will give them an assignment each week mm -hmm. of a couple of pages to practice of a certain thing. Uh, and speed is not uh, essential, it's not even desirable. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to take your time to form these letters and after you get uh, the formation because there's a certain slant like italicized, mm -hmm. it's a 50 to 53 degree slant to all the letters mm -hmm. and once they learn that it becomes second nature. Then uh, they get, pick up a little more fluidity and, and style with your, with your formations. Do you need special paper? We'll be providing uh, a notepad which has little uh, light blue lines on it so you can remember to keep the correct slant. And the nice thing about it is if you do a nice page that you want to keep, you can photocopy that and the blue drops out so you don't see the blue, you just see your lettering. Very nice. Well, we are very grateful that you have have a talent that you started way back in college and you're going to share it with people in this five-week course. Very generous of you, as always, Phil. Looking forward to it. And your fee for your supplies will give you everything that you need. We hope you sign up and enjoy Learning Calligraphy beginning Tuesday, May 6th with Phil Hilton.
Stay tuned all week for more previews of summer classes in the Academy of Lifelong Learning. But for now, it's time to preview this week's episode of Listening to the Words. This edition of Listening to the Words could be heard as a bridge between Earth Day, which was April 22nd, and Mother's Day, which will be May 11th. Jan Neiman takes a humorous look in what she titles, I Was a Terrible Mother. Howard Silverman of Shell Point finds out a whole lot after talking with his mother. Two other pieces are titled Breaking Mother's Day Rules and The Holiness of Mothers. Then Peter DeLisser of Shell Point explains how he's responsible for his own view of life. Next we visit a 10 million acre paradise in Maine. Then find out how to get the most on your walk in the woods. And finally, consider the lilies of the field. David Hauenstein here with a note that this program will not be seen for a two-week period from May 5th through May 18th. When Listening to the Words returns on May 19th, it will then be heard on Shell Point's Channel 12 instead of Channel 13, where it has been for the last three and a half years. So the new home for Listening to the Words will be Shell Point's Channel 12. Of course, you and yours can always find Listening to the Words at www.shellpoint.net slash listening. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today with the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Leslie Brand, and this week we have a special guest appearance, Melody Desolet. She is a volunteer coordinator, and we are privileged enough to have her join us for this week's activities. We're going to start out at 8 o'clock at Men's Match Play Doubles Tennis, the tennis courts. 9.15, we have billiards in the Resident Activity Center. Also at 9.15 is pottery. Instruction is available in the pottery studio. Lastly at 9.15 is virtual bowling in the Resident Activity Center. 10 o'clock is the men's match play doubles tennis at the tennis courts. 10.30 is the disciple men's Bible study group in the game room of the Woodlands. 10.45 is table tennis playing clinic in the tarpon room on the island. And at 11.30 is Health Connections, Agility, and Flexibility in the Health Club. That class is currently full. Now here's Melody for the afternoon activities. Well, thank you, Leslie. We start out at noon with Mahjong in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. Now at 1.15, there's three different options for you. Samba, which is a card game being played in the library lounge on the island. Table tennis also on the island down in the tarpon room. And the tone chimes are practicing in the osprey room on the island. Now from 1.30 to 3.30, the Gulf Coast Model Train Room is open for tours. Now it's the second from last day of this season to go in and see the train display, so be sure to do so today. At 1.45, we have a Health Connection Balance and Training Level 1 class. It is currently closed, but for those who have signed up, it's in the Health Club on the island. Now at 2 o'clock, headed over to the Oak Room at the Woodlands, we have the Beady-Eyed Bead Club. At 3 o'clock, we have a Health Connection Pilates Stretch class in the Health Club. And at 3.30, we have a Health Connection Aqua Agility and Conditioning class. It's currently closed, and it's being held in the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. Now at 4.15, we have the South Beach Grill dinner at its best. Sign-up is required for this dinner trip, and court pickups begin at 4.15 on the island, 4.25 for Woodlands, and 4.35 for Eagles Preserve. At 6.30, Duplicate Bridge is being played in the game room at the Woodlands. You can call 466-2924 for more information. In wrapping up the evening's activities at 6.45, we have Movie Night, How Green Was My Valley. This is a 1941 movie, and it's being played in the Social Center on the island. Leslie, it's such a joy to be here. And kind of in my old stomping grounds, I used to do this, and it's such a pleasure to be back for a brief moment. So thank you so much for joining us. Get out there and have some great activities, and we hope to see you out and about. My name is For Monday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is a stuffed pork chop with sweet potato mash and cauliflower. The dinner special is old home cooking night for $9.95, and the soup of the day is chicken gumbo. 
In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a meat lover's scramble with home fries for seven twenty-five. The dinner special is pot roast with mashed potatoes, carrots, and onions for eight twenty-five. And the Palm Grill is closed on Mondays. All menus are available twenty-four hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Uh, hi, I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor of the Village Church, and welcome to Village Church Connections. And I'm here today to tell you a little bit about the relocation of our worship services during the time that our sanctuary is being renovated. We really wrestled through this topic as a staff and as leadership of the church, and we finally came to the conclusion that we either had to do one of two things. Either we had to issue hard hats and gas masks for the worship services, or we had to move our services elsewhere. And so obviously we've had to make some adjustments in that regard and we have changed the location and the times for our worship services beginning on the first Sunday of May as we uh, look to have that, uh, the sanctuary renovated uh, beginning on May 1. And so the worship services will take place uh, in this way. We'll have two morning worship services, which are identical, one at 9 a.m. and one at 11 a.m., and they'll be held in the Grand Cypress Room in the Woodlands. And then our evening service on Sundays will be held in the Social Center on the island. We'll also have our regular uh, Wednesday evening prayer service, and that will also take place on, at the Social Center at 7.15 p.m., on, uh, on Wednesday evenings. And so just to repeat, 9 and 11 a.m., two identical worship services at the Grand Cypress Room uh, at the Woodlands, and then on Sunday evening at 6.15 p.m. in the Social Center, and then our Wednesday evening prayer service at 7.15 in the Social Center on the island. Now that'll involve obviously a great deal of adjustments. Our staff is making all kinds of logistical arrangements to make sure that we have a wonderful, vibrant worship uh, with an excellent opportunity for people to engage in, uh, in singing and uh, reading the scriptures and, and enjoying uh, the, a message from the Word of God on each and every Sunday. So we're looking forward to that. But obviously there are some adjustments that need to be made. Uh, you might be wondering how would you get to these locations uh, under these circumstances. Well, it's important to know that we've uh, made some plans in all, in, in all of those uh, areas. Uh, first of all, a bus service will be provided uh, with the Island uh, court pickup beginning at 8.15 in the morning on Sunday uh, in which uh, all the courts of the island will be picked up and uh, taken to the Woodlands Commons for that service and then the return trip will be made at 10.15 and so if uh, folks are wanting to come to the 11 a.m. service on the island then court pickup will begin shortly after 10.15 for the 11 o'clock service. Also if people are, are uh, in the Eagles Preserve or the Springs the regular on call bus op, uh, service is available. You simply need to call and they'll make sure that you have transportation uh, in plenty of time to get to the services at the Woodlands. And so bus service is available and I think that that will work very, very well. There's also ample parking around the Woodlands Commons, uh, both in front of uh, the four buildings there as well as across the street near the tennis courts. And uh, if you're going to drive, it might be a good idea to carpool, uh, but uh, whether you do or not, there's certainly is going to be plenty of parking and so I think that will not be an issue that will prevent anyone from coming to the worship services and the Grand Cypress Room 9 and 11 a.m. those two identical services on Sunday mornings. So we're really looking forward to uh, this because obviously we're in the middle of a major renovation uh, that will uh, greatly change some of the functional and aesthetic dimensions of the Village Church and so we're looking forward to that process. Uh, we don't know how long that will last Last. After all, it's a construction project, and one never exactly knows how long those things take. Uh, but uh, for the foreseeable future, that will be our schedule, and that's the way we'll uh, have to function. And I'm looking forward to it for a number of reasons. One is I think it provides us a wonderful opportunity to connect with different people in a different kind of way. Uh, because we're in a different location, we'll rub shoulders with uh, people that we haven't seen before, perhaps because they were on the other side of the sanctuary when we normally were worshiping. And so we'll have an opportunity to greet people that we haven't made connections with before and enjoy one another's company in a significant kind of way. And it's important as well that uh, as the people of God, we're willing and able to continue to worship together and to encourage one another even during a time of transition. So I'm looking forward to this and our staff is as well. We'll do everything we possibly can do to make sure that uh, the transportation is provided adequately and that everyone has an opportunity to worship together uh, 
uh, during these summer months or however long the renovation project takes. So thank you for joining us here on Village Church Connections. And even in the midst of the changes of routine that we find uh, this summer during the renovation project, we certainly hope to see you at the Village Church wherever we're worshiping. God bless you and we'll see you soon. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as history professor Adrian Kerr goes behind the headlines of modern Pakistan and Afghanistan. We'll also visit our state-of-the-art rehabilitation center and hear testimonials from residents who have benefited from its services. Until then, this is Shell Point Today from Monday, April 28th. I'm Kara Minowy. From all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day and we'll see you again tomorrow.